We've already set up a virtual network of five nodes uh, using topology seven under VertNet. So those five nodes are running in VirtualBox and we have this topology. We have a, a browser on node one, a web server for MyUni, the real MyUni website over on node four. And we have a malicious user on node two using a browser and they have a web server on node five. In this uh, demonstration, we're going to do an SQL injection attack. So in fact, we only need um, a, a single browser. So we'll be node 2, the malicious user, and they'll access the MyUni, the real MyUni website. We don't need node 5 or node 1 in this case. Remembering the, uh, the access control of the MyUni website means that a, a student user can only see their own grades. So let's consider node 2, our malicious user. In node 2, as the malicious user, we're going to access the grading website. So we'll open that using links, our web browser, and we can log in. And we're going to assume we're the student user S followed by seven zeros. So we'll type in the username, uh, our password. We'll log in as, as the malicious user. And it logs in and we can view our own grades so uh, the system allows us to see the grades for COIT 20262 okay I can see my own grade now the challenge is to try to see another student's grade so another student is one two three four five six seven and when we try to do that we see that it says you can only view your own grades so what we would like to do is defeat this security uh, we can try uh, with no course code, so still try to view uh, this other student's grades. We can use no course code, and again, you can only view your own grades. What can we do to try to uh, view the grades of other students? Well, we'll try eventually an SQL injection attack, and to do that, we need some knowledge of how the website or the web application works on the server. So we're going to have a look at the server and the web pages. Uh, we go into the, the directory for the web pages, the grading system. We see that there's some PHP and HTML files that implement the, the grading system, index, login. A query page is the page which uh, we see when we type in our ID and course code. So it's a form, and the form supports two fields, two entry fields, and a submit button. And then when we submit, we get the uh, view page. So let's look at the source code for those. First, looking at the source code for the query page. And we'll briefly go through the main parts relevant to the attack. Um, we'll not explain all the PHP. Uh, the query page, the user is logged in. Uh, this is the form code. Uh, if you look closely, it's HTML. And the action is when the submit, submit button is pressed, the, the fields will be posted to the view.php file. So that's the submit button. And there are two fields. There's a student ID and course code, and they are given the, the post variable names ID and course. So when a user posts that, those values are processed by the viewPHP file. So let's see how that processes that. So the two fields were submitted via post, so these lines of code are uh, extract them and store in the variables are called ID and course. So anything submitted via the form is stored in ID and course. So what the view page does, if everything's normal, is it will uh, use the ID and course to do a query on a database, a MySQL query, and get the student data and display it on the screen. Uh, so of course, you need to be logged in and query just for you. If you're logged in as Steve, you can see any students. But if you're logged in as a student user, you can earn the ID must match your logged in username. So that's the code that does that on the screen there. Assuming that's the case, so we're, the ID we're searching for is the same as the student and we're logged in as. 
Uh, if it's not, if they don't match, so you get the you can only view your own grades. So if we try to search for another student's grades, it will uh, not perform the SQL query. So we must use our logged in user's ID. And if we do, here's the MySQL query. So first we do a connection to the database. And there's two cases. There's if you have an empty course, it does one query where it doesn't consider the course and then the other for a full course. So let's look and, and see uh, an example and see what that looks like in the in the source code. So we sort of search for our all zeros, the malicious user, and the course code to COIT20262, and it shows us the grade. With respect to the source code of ViewPHP, what's happening? Well, the course code was included, so we consider this second query, where we select everything, select star from the table um, course grades, and then the condition. So normally we'd return all values, but we place the condition that the student ID field must match the ID that we enter. S followed by seven zeros in our example. So that puts the condition only return the fields which with that student ID, meaning we cannot see other student IDs. If we used a different student ID, the, the access control would not work. And the course code is entered there. So essentially it runs a query on the database that returns every uh, row which has the student ID and the uh, corresponding course code and it orders them by a student ID. That's the normal behavior and then the results are fetched and displayed on the screen. So that's uh, for example the, the grades are and the course and the grade. Uh, now what we want to do as the attacker we know that we cannot modify the student ID but so we want to try an attack where we submit uh, in this case a different course code and try and create a query such that we can see the the grades of other students what I'll do is run the query first and then we'll see how it works so we're adding this uh, extra values on the course code and you see the apostrophe or one equals one. Now we'll explain what that does in a moment, but of course we've got the malicious user's student ID and note what happens here. We see the grades of all students. So here our attack has worked. We not only see our grade, but we see the grades for the other students, S1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So here we've performed an attack and defeated the security mechanisms of the system. Why did this special course code allow our attack to work? So that's what we'll look at. Looking at, okay, we submitted a course code and the way that the application works is whatever is in the course field, whether it's a course code or some long string like we've used, is replaced in the SQL query. So let's do that replacement. And we have the COIT20262 or 1 equals 1. And we'll just make some, uh, move this across so we can see all of it on the screen. So now let's look closer at this SQL query where we'll select everything from course grades where some conditions. And the, the way that we constructed that form field, we now have three conditions and so student ID and course code or one equals one. Now think of that from a logic perspective. We, the ands go together. So we can think we have a, a, a brackets around there. So the condition is student ID equals S zeros and course code equals COIT20262 or one equals one. Now, because it's all one equals one, it doesn't matter what the first and re returns, which will return the fields for one. When does one equal one? One equals one always. So in fact, that always returns true. So logically, what we have is some condition or true. And some condition or true always returns true. 
meaning effectively this will return all rows in the course grades table. We've created a query such that it's uh, returning all rows from the table and that's what we get in the result. There are um, about t 10, 10 rows in the table and they are all returned allowing the attacker to see this uh, data when they shouldn't be able to. So this structure of this form field is uh, specifically designed to, to take advantage of the flaw in the system. I'll leave it to you to, to look at how to design the system to Im improve upon it and to uh, avoid such SQL injection attacks.